So now we have returned to uh, the title of this um, um, series, Shake the Dust Off Your Feet. And so then the goal becomes for you to walk away. Now that you have assessed areas of your life where you were scapegoated as a problem, or you became an emotional runner, or you struggled with, with procrastination, or, or, or people projected you as a problem, you're going to have to shake the dust off your feet. That means you're going to have to walk away. And so when you look at this, I, this pick here with the two arrows uh, pointing uh, backward to the person who is walking forward, that person is walking away. The person can no longer solve uh, the problems of others. That person is going to have to make a decision or that person has made a decision that they're going to walk away. Leave the arrows to their own devices. The arrow, the right arrow or the left arrow, that per whoever that person represents, whoever, whatever entity uh, that represents, they're going to have to solve their own uh, issues. They're going to have to solve their own problems. You can't solve it. And so when you're thinking about walking away, it requires a self-assessment, a self-reflection, and a healing process. So for one, self-assess means process of evaluating oneself or one's actions. Self-reflect, process of taking time to evaluate your thoughts, feelings, behaviors, motivations, desires. And then healing, process of becoming sound and healthy again. The key, uh, key phrase or the key word is process. So just because you walk away from something doesn't necessarily mean that uh, it's done. You can walk out of an, an abusive relationship, but your process now begins to self-assess and self-reflect and heal. Why in the world did you attract that type of person? That's not victim blaming. That's actually suggesting that a lot of times what is in someone else is on the inside of us. Meaning that if you are attracting an abuser, that means you have had some exposure to abuse. And so you pick and choose who and what looks like you on the inside. A lot of times we have been emotionally sleeping because of some trauma so that when we attract that devil, we don't know that we are attracting that devil because of something was going on with us because we never knew that we needed to resolve. We only understood that mama doesn't like me. I need to get out of mama's house. That's it. So we get out of mama's house, but then we run into a devil or we run into the wrong friend who gets us into stuff. And we try to figure out how is it that I got in, in, in how do, how did I run from one situation to the next? Because it's something on the inside of you that is, uh, that is troubling you, but it's hard to address because it's painful and it will call, it will cause you to have to enter a grieving process. And so, uh, the, the goal of walking away is a process in and of itself. Just because you leave the house and lock the door doesn't mean you have fully walked away. You have to walk away from your thinking or thinking that was imparted into you, thinking that was projected onto you, core values and systems and all different types of things that, uh, uh, all that mistreatment, because a lot of times if you don't address the mistreatment, you're gonna mistreat somebody else. If you, if you were taken taken for granted, someone is going to take you for granted. If you were taken advantage of, someone's going to take, take advantage of you. So when you're walking away, you are evaluating all of the systems that you were a member of and that you later, later participated in as a people pleaser. You were a member of it because you were a victim, uh, because you were projected to be the scapegoat, which turned you into a victim because of the abuse. But then once you got older and thinking and logically thinking about it, you became a people pleaser to try to sustain that very system uh, and, and also perpetuate it outside of the immediate family system. So then you're in college and doing exactly the same thing. You meet exactly your same family dynamic uh, in, in the group of friends you have chosen to be friends with. That's what happened to me. There was a, a, there was a friendship group that I was a part of. One of the girls was kind of like uh, a leader in her in, in 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 her own right, right? She she you know called herself to be the leader. And then there was uh, one or two guys, two or three girls, including myself. And the girl who was the leader was the one who asked me to to roommate with her. 
and I didn't realize that she was my mother. She, it, it later revealed itself, right? But her mannerisms, her attitude, how she pit uh, all of us against each other, uh, how she talked behind my back, how she betrayed me, that was my mother. So then I attracted my mother, then I attracted uh, a person who was like my cousin, I attracted uh, the two men who were like my brothers, I attracted my stepfather, um, who was kind of manipulative, right? Um, and so I attracted in friends in college, people who came from my family dynamic. So once I began to, uh, to self-assess self my own complicity, because I still chose them as friends, then I began to self-reflect on uh, what I did in those relationships. So then I attracted my stepfather in my, my stepfather was not abusive, but my stepfather, uh, my real father was abusive towards my mother. My stepfather wasn't necessarily abusive, but he didn't take accountability. He didn't take responsibility for his actions with my mother. So then I attracted that person. He would whine about my mother not doing every, doing this and that and what, but he was the one who left her for somebody else and left her with uh, a, a child, uh, with kids to raise, right? And so um, uh, then I began to attract those types of men. So that, that, that became a self-reflection process. And then it all came to uh, a brick wall with the last relationship that I had, 2013 to 2016, where there was a devil, and that was that was an enemy of uh, uh, to me. And so, as a result of being in that relationship and him cheating and him doing different things um, um, uh, to me later, uh, when I finally exited him out of my uh, uh, house and out of my heart and everything like that, I felt the mental strength leave me. One day I was standing at the gate at the at the end of the apartment complex and I had had a conversation with his ex who kept coming back and forth and he kept playing around with and she told me that he was still trying to mess with her and when I was standing at the gate listening to her I felt breath come out of my body. It's kind of like a cat with nine lives and then if he lose one he has eight more that's what it felt like. I felt breath come out of my body. When he finally when I finally got him out in 2016 I felt mental energy, literally mental energy leaving me. It took years to, to, uh, to get over that. And so that, once he was out 2016, all the way until 2024, and now I'm actually entering my healing process. I didn't get involved with anybody. I didn't, uh, I just went to work. I did projects. I did everything like that. Uh, but it is in 2024, from all that time, in 2024 is when I'm now going through my healing process. And now I'm doing it. I'm not letting no one get in the way of my healing. You're not getting in the way. I'm not putting you in the way. And I'm going to take as much, all the time I need to heal and to get over all these toxic situations that, that have threatened. They threaten your very existence. They threaten your mind. They threaten your heart your body, your emotions, your mental health, your finances, your walk with God, all that, they affect all of that and, and, and um, threaten, threaten the, the, the viability of all of that. So when you are shaking the dust off your feet, it's essentially once you realize you cannot um, get that situation to change, the person doesn't want to change, the person want to, doesn't want to, uh, they keep wanting to cross boundaries, they want to keep keeping you in emotional stuck. They don't want to see you different, things like that. It's time to shake the dust off your feet. They don't want to receive you. And essentially they don't want to um, change because usually if you're the person who's always scapegoated, you're again, you're usually the change agent. You're the generational change person. And when they don't want to change, it's time to shake the dust off your feet because you can get stuck and trying to help them and trying to believe in them and ride and die and run for uh, uh, run for them and march for them and do all these different things when they don't give a rat's butt at all. All they want to do is keep you down uh, wherever they want you to be down. So then your goal becomes to walk away. All right, so thank you very much for, uh, for listening to this series. Visit, subscribe, and follow so you can find my website, regionwidefavors.com. 
I'm on YouTube, of course, youtube.com forward slash at Regina Y. Favors. And then my Amazon author page is amazon.com forward slash author forward slash Regina Y. Favors. So do take some time to think about some of the ideas that that um, I went through in this particular um, Shake the Dust Off Your Feet series. I don't know if I'm going to have um, um, a book component. I'm not quite sure just yet. Uh, but it is something that I am considering. Uh, so I do hope that you will listen to the full series. I'm going to have it in full as one video length, and then I'm going to have it separate as well. So thank you very much for listening. Please visit, subscribe, and follow. Have a great day.